The people do not have much trust in politicians. The things that I would never imagine in 2019 is already happening or has already happened. The, the government debates about, the, let's say, about, uh, no, I, I will exaggerate, but the concept will be clear, about the dragons or about the witches or about something like very populistic. Uh, topics and they don't uh, argue about the numbers uh, and uh, about the statistics. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Athenano Show. Um, today, we're going to be discussing the Georgian national election. Uh, and to join me in this discussion, I have a very special guest, Zura Balanchivadze. Um, who is a Georgian journalist, tour guide, and former TV host for Imedi TV, one of the most popular TV channels uh, in Georgia. So, uh, Zura, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you. And, uh, yeah, so I wish all the best to you and to the audience. Okay, okay. Well, um, for those who don't know much about Georgia, the country, uh, the first question I have for you is what is the – political or electoral system in Georgia? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So uh, Georgia is uh, a young republic, yeah. So um, uh, since 1991, since the fall of Soviet Union, but usually any typical Georgian adds the uh, other three years from the first Republic of Georgia after the fall of Russian Empire, so we obtained a like, um, republic, yeah. And then we had a 70 years break, and then since 1991, we are once again independent from Russia. And uh, our electoral system has uh, changed, actually. And this is the first time that we have uh, the proportional system, so not a majoritarian system that we had before. Like uh, some part, uh, people were voting for a party and also for a special candidate, majoritarian candidate. So now we have just for parties. So this will be new to us. It was the promise given by the government, which uh, uh, had to uh, be uh, uh, like a fulfilled four years ago, but at the time, they, in the end, they said no. Then uh, they postponed it for four years, and finally they made it happen this uh, year. So uh, this election will be for us critically important not only uh, you know, for its uh, this technical system what I mentioned about but also uh, uh, to define Georgia's uh, faith so whether Georgia will uh, continue to uh, walk towards the path leading to the Western institutions like uh, European Union and NATO or uh, it will go uh, like a falsely to the West, this is what the current uh, ruling party says, that they are also pro-Western, but really this is just a mask that leads to uh, Russification, uh, which has been proven with numerous and numerous uh, cases um, uh, that uh, before Georgia happened to Russia. So Georgia is just replicating, sadly, uh, those tendencies, and and so Georgia is a is a parliamentary system. So yes, yes, yes. The it's head, the yes. the head of the state is the the prime minister, correct? Yes. So I forgot to forgot to mention. Yeah. So the head of uh, is a prime minister, and then comes the um, head of the parliament. Yeah, and then uh, becomes a president uh, who officially is the highest military representative of the country. The president can announce uh, the uh, 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 like war case. How do we do uh, I forgot how, how do we uh, call it the emergency of war. What would they call it so when the country state of war? So sorry, state of war. That's what can the president can announce. That's their uh, right. Also can pardon certain citizens and also can veto the law that the parliament has obtained, but uh, the parliament can overrule if uh, a certain amount of uh, um, uh, constitutional, the, the, the majority votes uh, against. So that's, that's it. 
Okay. And so, so you mentioned um, that the current party says they're, they're also pro EU, but um, yeah. there's some skepticalness over that. Mm-hmm. Um, what's mm-hmm. your, what is the name of the party that is currently in, in power and who is their main opposition in this election? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the main party is called Kartuli Otsneba, which means Georgian Dream. And it's their ruling party since 2012, when they expelled their former ruling party, Ertiani National Mudroba. It means the United Na- uh, National Movement, uh, nationalist, sometimes we call it like this. Uh, and the, that is the main opposition party still. So uh, they had a major defeat in 2012 and also 2016. Uh, but over those years, this party managed to somehow to recover uh, its reputation. Uh, they did not have the uh, those like uh, electoral support that they uh, once had, but they managed to uh, have. Uh, according to certain researchers, like uh, from uh, 13 to 19 percent, let's say, of uh, Georgia's uh, electoral population. Yeah, so I'm just holding now the results of two different uh, researchers. So one is Edson Research, which gave uh, uh, 19 percent, and the Gorbi which is uh, widely considered to be the pro-governmental uh, researcher, they gave 19.6%. Uh, yeah. And uh, the score we also gave to the ruling party uh, 59.5%. And Edison Research gave to the ruling party 33%. So that's, that's the uh, big change because the ruling party promised... Uh, uh, to or uh, have sixty uh, um, percent uh, success of, uh, from uh, this election. Yes. So as for uh, the ruling party's uh, ambitions, let's say uh, to westernize Georgia, year after year, these ambitions become more um, symbolic rather than practical. And uh, if we are uh, if I am allowed to talk about it now, I will do it now, or may, or if you give me the specific question, so I will uh, just uh, go deeply into this topic uh, whenever I would like like to. Well, I just I I, I, I want to get to that in a moment, but I just want to mm-hmm. um, touch upon so so Georgian Dream mm-hmm. right now is ahead in mm-hmm. most of the polls. Um, do they need above fifty percent to form a government uh, on their own? Mm-hmm. Yes, and uh, yes, we, we, this is what they usually fifty percent, and uh, yeah, above one. Yeah, this is how do, they do it, and this is now a case that it might we might have a coalition government. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. and who is the who is the head of of the Georgian? Dream. Uh, George and Dreams uh, had his uh, now. Uh, who is that? Irakli Bashvili. Yeah. So the former uh, prime minister. So basically, to be honest, it doesn't matter who is the head. Okay. Of the party, unofficially, the head of the Georgian Dream is the uh, is busy Ivanishvili. So the billionaire uh, who has been all these years behind so the oligarch so and he appoints the hats he appoints the ministers he appoints everybody so it simply does not matter who it is so that's why even i hesitated to answer because i don't remember so it's so it's really just the party of bizzini ivanishvili exactly this is the this is the government and this is the like um like a well-being of bizzini because prime ministers Prime ministers, ministers appear, disappear without any uh, reliable explanation. Yes, so this is what we have. So I, I, I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the role of, of the president in Georgia, um, because I know she's a very interesting person. She's born in France, but she's ethnically Georgian. 
um, she's kind of become the a figurehead of the opposition, but sh herself, she doesn't have that much power. So I w I'm just wondering if you can speak a little bit about um, the president, who she is, and what her background is, and what her role is in Georgian politics. Yes, it's a quite interesting uh, case because the uh, the politician, uh, the uh, yeah, the government. Uh, politician that has uh, less power than prime minister and the head of parliament is now uh, the most appreciated politician in the country. Really, the most appreciated politician by the society, the country is this person. And it's quite interesting why. So her name is Salome Zurabishvili. It's like a Georgian name and surname. So her family migrated uh, uh, in uh, early uh, 20s of the 20th century to France. That's where she was born. And so they maintained like uh, the Georgian roots. And uh, so firstly, she came uh, here. She was invited uh, by Sakashvili. Uh, she, first, she was the... Uh, um, um, ambassador of France to Georgia, then Saakashvili made her the, the foreign minister of Georgia. So she changed the citizenship from French to Georgian. Then she went to the opposition, and then uh, it turned out that uh, Bidina Ivanishvili was fond of her. And uh, for the upcoming campaign, for the presidential campaign, they picked her as a symbol of Europe, as a, like a, a very that's a famous to us, a Euro Georgian European politician, uh, uh, and in 2016 and uh, 2018, sorry, and uh, in the elect election campaign, the ruling party was supporting her with uh, all the resources they had, and let's say the ruling party made her win the election and. These videos are still available on Facebook and all the social media. How the ruling party is praising her for being who she is. And she's the hope for Georgia. She's the European dream of Georgia and something like this. And uh, then, let's say, 2020, 2021, uh, and especially 2022, when Georgian government started to like uh, detach from the European values and... Uh, they started to blame uh, the West uh, of being uh, uh, like uh, the, the, the trying to, uh, let's say, as they say, interfere into Georgia's domestic uh, uh, business and but to pull, uh, pull Georgia into the war. Yeah. So next to Ukraine. So she firmly stepped and said that the government is doing wrong. And this is how it started to break. And but she also criticized the opposition because of not being serious, of being, uh, uh, let's say, only let's say election opposition, not the opposition party with its values. So, and also uh, op the opposition. She also blamed both sides of lack of dialogue between each other. This is what European Union Charles Michel was asking back then to have a dialogue at least on something. Yes. Uh, and then the government started to criticize her a lot, and later on, later on, uh, she had to speed up. For instance, uh, last uh, year, she had a very powerful speech. Uh, on the 21st, on the 26th of May, it's Georgia's Independence Day, and President opens it. And uh, it was like a full of, uh, the tribunes were full of diplomats and ministers and everybody was sitting there. The most important day of uh, Georgia's uh, political history is uh, like Independence Day. And that's where she said that for your kids, for your wives, for your relatives, for your husbands, you, you need United States and uh, European countries. This is where they study, which is where they live. This is where you go to rest. Look at yourself. You have the, uh, let's say, suntan of uh, um, uh, Como Lake in Italy, but for the society, you say that those countries where you spend your uh, time and you like to spend your time are uh, are like uh, uh, destroying the family values, are like uh, 
like in the traditions are like a gazer they they try to affect your brain and so forth and so forth so where are you not deceiving the people when you say this or when you go there for your well-being and it was a big explosion yes and uh so why is the president so trusted right now? Because firstly, she doesn't support the, the Russian law and she did not like uh, approve. She put the veto and the parliament overruled the veto, but still, so she officially said that. And uh, if the government in this late, latest two years was like uh, slowly and slowly shutting the door, uh, the dialogue door between uh, the European Union countries and also United States, so from Georgia's official ruling uh, side, there has not left a single politician to whom the West can talk. And the president has become the only person who can, who can be like this. Why? Because she is legitimate. She's still legitimate in the way that she is elected. Yes, the ruling party needs all its best to, to be elected, but yes, she is elected. So she's not appointed, she's elected. So, uh, and uh, that's the thing. And yes, she has a symbolic uh, power, but she was the person who BBC, Rayu, Noraidu, Hans, like um, I don't remember the channel names right now, but all the uh, CNN and so forth, all the most important uh, uh, medias interviewed. And she was the, like a bridge and she, to, of Georgia to the West because ruling party members would not do it. And she was telling them what is going on in the country and what are the threats for Georgia and what are might be the threats for uh, the Western countries if uh, Georgia will be, let's say, swallowed in the worst case um, by Russia. Because what are the next? countries in the row. So that is why, uh, and she actually joined the recent uh, march of uh, freedom, it's a pro-European march, a couple of days uh, ago, joined that and came out with a speech and she got the uh, biggest admiration. So, which means that currently uh, she is really defending the democracy here from the state level, because she's the only politician from the state that is opposing all what we mentioned about. Has there been any any um, attempts from like supporters and members of the Georgian Dream to portray uh, Zurabishvili as like not fully authentically Georgian because she was born in in France, um, like? to try to discredit her to say oh she's uh, uh, an agent of the the european union an agent of france she wasn't born here she didn't grow up here um she's not authentically georgian uh officially they didn't say that i i wonder why because they are able of doing anything but what they but in the minor talks yes people say that oh and but it's really goes against what they said uh, six years ago, because they praised her of being this Georgian French. And that's the, 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 they said it back the time. It was a value. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is that uh, they, this is what they said. So they said that so, uh, she was a disobedient and uh, during this, when she was losing the first term, because she, she won the election with the second term, and they put such a such a huge resources to push that there because uh, the ruling party did not have their own candidate. So the Salome was a kind of neutral candidate backed by the ruling party. And they said, we, we've put such a huge effort to put her there and she's ungrateful and like something like this. This is what they, this is what they said. Yes. Um, and also they wanted to impeach her. But uh, uh, sadly for them, the impeachment uh, has to uh, the, uh, has to happen with a constitutional majority, 
of their voters and the ruling party doesn't have the constitutional majority so not many the their the votes uh, were not enough to impeach her so opposition of course did not um, follow that's that's how she remains but her tenure ends in December so that's also do you think it's possible? from now yeah, tell me I was say, do you think it's possible that she could either um, launch her own party and and try to make a bid in the next parliamentary elections um, mm -hmm. with, with her own party um, and to try to lead the opposition against Georgian Dream if Georgian Dream wins this time? Uh, against Georgian Dream, you say? Uh, uh... Could be, could be, because she said she's not go. She, she's not planning to go. Yes, so this is what she said. So some say that uh, she might be uh, like a, a good candidate for um, prime minister, and uh, she like uh, didn't really specify anything. What is she going to do? She do to remain like uh, active uh, in politics or something like this, but. What we know so far is that so she said that she's going to remain here and not going back to France. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, when we were, we were just talking briefly, you were you were talking about Georgian Dream and um, you know their their policy positions, but it sounds like from what you're saying that um, yeah, fundamentally the the strongest difference between Georgian dream and the opposition right now is that Georgian dream, well, they say they're pro EU, are really tending in a direction that is closer to um, Russia and um, away from the EU. And then the opposition is tending toward a direction that wants to be more pro EU and um, conform to like the EU countries' laws and, and standards. Um, is that, is that an, a, a relatively ad, um, accurate description of, of? Yes, yes, it is. Uh, so the government, uh, the ruling party, uh, starting from 2019 and especially from 2022, started to fundamentally detach from the European Union uh, and Western values. Firstly, uh, with uh, the, their uh, statements, and since uh, this year, with their laws. So, because uh, our one of our chapters in the constitution says, and this is obtained by the ruling party over 10 years ago, that Georgia's aspiration is to join European Union and NATO. And what they do currently is that they obtain the law that goes against the, this uh, uh, chapter of the Constitution. So, uh, as the experts say, it's anti-constitutional uh, law uh, because European Union officially uh, uh, declared, yeah, and not only uh, not only certain people, but the highest representatives of European Union uh, of all the uh, uh, branches. Uh, declared that if Georgia will obtain or continues to uh, go to this direction, the uh, like a, mm, a membership of Georgia and the European Union will not happen as long as this law is active. And so, what what exactly is this? Um, like what is the specifics of the foreign agents bill, and why why does uh, you consider it um, so antithetical to, to their values? You're right. So the foreign agents law, it's not a bill, at least already so it's a law. So is that each and every NGO, uh, the uh, like, um, salary, the money of which, the, 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 like a more, at least 20% of which is financed from the outer sources, uh, it needs to register itself in the official database of uh, last year they, they were calling it agents uh, of the uh, you know, 
foreign agents. Uh, now they call the uh, um, how they they say the um, uh, the pastors of the foreign power. Basically, they changed the term. Otherwise, <laughs> they just renamed the word agent in a different way. And uh, this, uh, and if the organization refuses doing it, the government will do it still, and the government uh, um, will do it without any kind of uh, approval. So the government does not need uh, anything uh, to stay. So they will just decide that each and every organization will automatically be there. Yes, without giving a chance to the organization to um, uh, prove it's uh, like, like being an agent or not. So they are not given this chance. This is one. The second thing, between the uh, second and the third procedure in the parliament uh, to be voted, because it needs the three passes to um, the bill to become a law. Yeah, uh, the, the ruling party pass the correction into an already existing double voted bill. They added the other topic, number eight, which gives uh, the uh, officials a right to mm, open the private conversations, private personal, uh, any kind of information, say whether it be health, sexual, whatever the information, of the personal lives of the people who work in those NGOs. Before, it was only about the organiza organizational information. Now it is also about the people who work there. So that is it. So and. Um, European Union um, clearly stated, and the United States as well. So this goes against uh, mm, uh, the idea of uh, like human rights, an idea of uh, like um, basically any, any any democratic ideas regarding the organizations, regarding their uh, people's rights and privacy rights, and so forth and so forth. So this is it, and this is what. Uh, in 2011 and 12, Russia already did. Also with the same purposes to make everything transparent because officially they call it the transparency law. But meanwhile, the government also passed a law uh, about, in parallel with this transparency. The same days, they passed a law about offshore. So now Georgia can become a really reliable place for the uh, uh, to become uh, the uh, registering places of the offshore, offshore comp uh, companies and organizations. As they say, it will, um, this will bring a lot of money to Georgia. So when uh, we talk about the transparency, so uh, our ruling party calls that low transparency and <laughs> This law, as if does not uh, kind of remove, give any kind of obstacle to that transparency, which our government officially craves so much. And before the election, they also brought the second, the third bill on the table, which also became a law. It's uh, protection of family value. Uh, which officially uh, means that. Uh, so a uh, gay couple, a gay couple can't have a um, or go, can't have a baby, like uh, adopt a baby, which in practice we did not have a, any kind of thing. This in practice now it's written in, in law. Otherwise, we didn't have any kind of uh, example happening before. So, and also uh, uh, to protect uh, the children from LGBTQ propaganda, which does not really specify what they mean. Only one thing that they say it might uh, revise certain literature, uh, movies, or any kind of uh, art if there will be a need 
some kind of scenes to be revised, corrected, hidden, blurred, or sent. So this is it. So the, the law is quite wide. It means uh, it can be interpreted the way the lawmakers um, want. So I just want to clarify one thing. Did you mention that um, Georgia has become like a, a space for a lot of uh, Russian businesses to come? Could be anything. Okay. The Russian businesses included. When we have lots of Russian businesses operating now in Georgia, starting from, uh, especially starting from uh, 2022, yeah, so as they say, 35,000 big or small business operates now in Georgia. Yeah. Um, and in parallel, the big uh, Western um, businesses or interests are leaving the country. So step by step, gradually, especially now. Now everything has, uh, mm, uh, let's say, accelerated. So the things that we could not, uh, now I'm saying as a citizen. So the things that I would never imagine in 2019 is already happening or has already happened. Yes, like our government criticizing with uh, the uh, the most undiplomatic words, <laughs> Uh, uh, the United States officials, uh, the West, like uh, European officials. This I would not really uh, imagine. And also, uh, uh, what I would not imagine five years back, five years ago, was that uh, the, the Georgia would open uh, the flights, direct flights to Russia, uh, plus. Uh, the operation system would be so open and uh, also their political speeches would be basically mirroring each other towards the West. So, uh, yeah. And Russia has uh, disappeared from uh, the uh, public speeches from our uh, ruling party's politicians. They uh, usually say... Uh, uh, the aggressor, or they don't say anything. They say just foreign powers. So as if uh, all these uh, troubles that Georgia has recently undergone does not have a name who was behind it. So, for instance, Georgia's uh, very special date is 9th of April. April 9 in 1989 marks the black date in Georgia's history because that's when uh, Georgia's population came officially in the meeting. There was a series of meetings, it was like a, a, a peaceful meetings, peaceful manifestations for Georgia's independence. And nine, uh, the, the early morning of uh, 9th of April 1989, Soviet troops attacked uh, those demonstrators and killed 21 people in the streets, on the main street of uh, Tbilisi, Rustavili Avenue, like a 16-year-old kids died there, school kids, and official propaganda before it was saying that they are like uh, drug abusers and prostitutes and this kind of people. This, uh, this was the official propaganda back at the time. And two years after, the same and the very... 9th of April 1991, Georgia announced independence. So, since then, this is a public holiday, and uh, we usually commemorate uh, uh, the heroes of those people who died that day, and uh, usually people bring flowers, and the government officials also bring flowers, but what is the tendency? Currently, it's been about four years or so, the ruling party politicians never mention Russia, never mention Soviet Union when they mm, have an official like uh, this uh, ceremony of putting the flowers there and respecting those people as if they, those, uh, that event happened just uh, amorphously without any kind of relation to anything as if those people just died 
and there were there is nobody killed in that. So they uh, try not to mention like a Lord Voldemort, something like that. So this is what the tendency is here. So it seems like um, from what you've said that the the opposition is really their main um, stance. Their main issue is moving closer to the EU uh, in opposition to the direction that Georgian dream is going. Um, is there has there been any signs or um, demonstrations of opposition in the public sphere uh, against the direction that Georgian dream is heading and in particular against the foreign agents law? Mm -hmm. Good question. So uh, there uh, like uh, so the tragedy here is that Georgia uh, does not have a really like a serious opposition in the way, that here usually the opposition appears, let's say, before the elections, uh, strongly appears at the time, or when something really uh, tragic, really shameful happens. Usually the opposition parties, like, let's say, with their own values, with their long-term operational plans, Sadly, we don't have that much. Usually, opposition that we have is the opposition uh, parties are that are just against the ruling party. Yeah, couple of the so-called opposition, the proxy parties, basically they are the same, uh, uh, like uh, ruling party, but officially are registered as opposition. Otherwise, they have one in one the mirroring the same values. So the idea is that. Uh, what we have currently is that we have the group of people that are parties and that are the certain politicians who do not have this long-term existence. There, there are several long-term existing uh, uh, opposition parties. One of them is National Movement, so the former ruling party. Uh, the, and there, there are the other ones that have recently uh, formed. So uh and uh, the people do not have much trust in politicians usually here there's a thing that people do not have much trust in politicians uh, uh because from the both sides it has become very unhealthy here for to debate because they do not really debate about the topics they just debate about uh and usually the government does it more uh, the, gov the, the government debates about, the, let's say, about, uh, no, I, I will exaggerate, but the concept will be clear, about the dragons or about the witches or about something like very populistic uh, topics, and they don't uh, argue about the numbers uh, and uh, about the statistics, so in order to make it understandable. So they uh, usually debate more about some uh, like uh, imaginary or unimaginary, uh, unimaginable things. Yeah, so uh, this is the thing. But why does then opposition have such a big support right now? You might ask the question if it's uh, that weak or if some people are skeptical or negative towards, for instance, a former ruling party and so forth. Yes, so the idea is that they are tired of the government. They are tired of the ruling party. They are tired. They are really scared of the ruling party's latest decisions. Yeah. And also, uh, they do not want to lose what uh, Georgia has already obtained. For instance, the biggest uh, achievement, if you ask a lot of people, is the visa free regime with Schengen. Yeah. That really made people discover. The Western countries to see how the life is there, not in the TV, but in reality. And this is what they want in their own country. That is why now, as like hundreds of thousands of people traveled out abroad, returned to Georgia, and this is what they want now our country to have. And uh, mm, uh, this is what the opposition promises. And not only the uh, national movement, but there are the other blocks that are now getting more popular actually than the national movement, uh, because national movement still has some kind of stamp of former aggressor, because we should not forget that national movement also started very well with the highest trust 
or the more than 90% of the like uh, voters in the election. But later on, actually uh, became very much violent show because if we sum up the national movements, uh, like its second term, it was like uh, into the West, but only exclusively with us. So that was the like uh, uh, the second term of nationalist movement. As for the ruling party Georgian Dream, we can sum up it like this: like uh, let us stay in power forever by all means. Yeah. So this is what we have. Yeah. And the ruling party, the way the national movement kind of uh, lived till this day is also because of the ruling party, because they decided to make uh, it as a, like a uh, icon of enemy. Yeah. So the ruling party needed the nationalist movement to exist, to frighten its electorate that unless you like elect me, this evil will return. So this is classical what we've seen in many, many uh, times in history, yes? Yeah? So this kind of uh, scenario. And there are the other part. But main thing what uh, is also here, the society who is tired of the politicians, whenever they have a, like a protest, whatever the protest, you know about George, yeah? Politicians do not appear there. The opposition party politicians stand in, 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 in like a, uh, inside the mass, but they don't go on stage. Because several times they did that, and if there were different people who like sympathized one, let's say, political party, but hated the other one, so they started to whistleblow. So entire spirit of the people uh, started to lose, and it became political, uh, let's say, manifestation rather than social manifestation. See, and that. Then was used by the government to say, oh, this is not the people, but this is the opposition who uh, rules that. Yeah. So in order to uh, like uh, take away uh, uh, this, uh, uh, let's say, uh, informa informational power, the government to say this, opposition parties do not appear as a, a spokesman on this meeting. So they just stand among the people and they have the agitation, not all these big um, uh, meetings, but like individually when they decide to go to the electorate. So they don't use that stage for that. Yes. So I think it's a clever decision and this is what is going on right now. Um, uh, because, yeah, so people have a different opinion about the certain politicians uh, and certain political parties about the uh, among the opposition, and this is something the way uh, it uh, it is right now. So each and every politician remains silent in this um, in this big meeting. So of course they use them in the social media, but they don't appear there on the uh, no, stage. Mm. Is is there any difference between uh, like younger and older populations? Uh, mm -hmm. In terms of their views on this this bill and, and Georgian dream, like is it mainly the younger people that are want to be closer to the EU that are against the foreign agents bill, um, but maybe the older people are a little bit more conservative? Exactly, that's what it is. Yeah, uh, it's about the age. Uh, if we say broadly, then we I'll narrow it down. Yes, and it's about the uh, geography. So it's about the region. Usually, it's about the like the social um, field as well. Let's say the big cities, especially the capital. Yeah, with other many alternatives of the information, where you know, people uh, have more chances uh, to uh, even to travel. Yeah, and also have a little bit better um, social uh, reality. Yeah, so they are more into the Western values and less to the false Western values. Yeah, so the false Western values is, for instance, like a peace, because the ruling party says that if you elect anybody than us, so it, Russia will uh, start war here. And, but they don't say Russia will do it. The war will come. So 
This is the idea. And uh, uh, the idea, by the way, yeah, well, what it is, like, no, no. So the West pushed Ukraine to irritate Russia, and this is how why Russia attacked Ukraine. Otherwise, Russia was not going to attack. So that's why the war is uh, Europe's and America's uh, um, guilt. This is what the ruling party's idea is about. They pushed Ukraine into, into it, and... Uh, now they say that when 2008 Russia was bombing Georgia, that's what they also say. The foreign, uh, the, the, sorry, uh, the former a party, the nationalists, pushed Georgia into the war. Otherwise, if there wouldn't be them, the war would not happen. So this is it. And some people buy it. And usually, these are the people who've seen the war, and who've seen the war in Abkhazia, in Trinvali, so called uh, South Ossetia. And uh, this is how the propaganda works. Yeah. Uh, and uh, younger generation, of course, is pro European. Of course, there are certain people, young people, who support uh, the ruling party. Uh, but what I really saw these uh, two years is that the age started to slowly, slowly change. And uh, more and more, 50 plus people uh, are aware of uh, Georgian Dream's uh, manipulations and uh, they say that they are just tired of them and they said that they realized that uh, it is not uh, the right party to be in the power because they are deceiving the people and they are Mm, using simple propaganda to uh, yes, sell black as white and white as black. Um, I guess the last question I have is in, in 2003 there was uh, mm -hmm. an election um, in Georgia where you, you guys had a, a pro-Russian president um, who was elected, but then there was... When? A... Sorry. Oh, 2003. 2003? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so back then. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. And then um, the the Rose Revolution mm -hmm. uh, occurred to, to oust um, mm -hmm. the president. Um, do you see something similar happening... Uh, at this time, if Georgian Dream mm -hmm. wins again? So uh, let me specify one thing. In 2003, the revolution happened because of the uh, national election of parliament. Okay. Not the presidential election. Presidential election was later. Ah, right. Parliament. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And that was back the time it was like Shevardnadze, Edward Shevardnadze, who in the Soviet time was actually quite a successful politician, but the system, the society of the 90s was not really ready for the transitions that we had to have because of the like, mental corruption that we had. Uh, Georgia was very corrupted back then. Uh, and uh, yes, people also got tired, but the level of democracy back then and the level of freedom of speech actually, even in those times, because the laws were not uh, everywhere. So uh, many laws have not been, had not been written that. But the level of Expression, what we see from now, you know, what is perspective that we had a debate that we had between certain parties that now we don't have the debate between the certain part, the government and the opposition party debates. We did not have it anymore. So when we look back to those times, even 10 years ago, we see a debate. Now we don't have debate. Now each and every TV station shows only one side, only one side, even between the opposition parties. So they sometimes debate, but the government doesn't exist there. In the governmental TVs, the opposition doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. And if when we watch those times, even in those corrupted times before the 2003, at least we had a debate. Yeah. So then what happened? The election was really, really falsificated, and there were physical like, proofs how the people were stealing their boxes, urns, full of votes, and pushing into to the car and kidnapping and stealing them from the uh, in, uh, election uh, uh, units. And uh, everybody knew that it was uh, 
uh, their votes were lost. And people gathered, and uh, at the time, that's the thing that, that uh, the military did not fire, which means that uh, the government surround, like, uh, surrendered. And the president uh, resigned. So that's what happened. So it was a peaceful revolution. That's what it was, revolution, yes. And that's how uh, Saakashvili, uh, Burjanadze, and Shvania. So uh, Nino Burjanadze, he became the uh, head of the parliament, and Zurab Shvania became the prime minister. It was the cabinet, so and something like this. And uh, this is how it started. Then Zurab Shvania died. Then Nino Burjanadze left uh, the ruling wing and went to the opposition. And this is how the second term of Saakashvili became, like, and the nationalists became solid like this. And all the good reforms that we had, so like digitalization, police reform, education, health, and so forth, and so forth, um, uh, and also the law and uh, legislation, uh, they, they worked well, but eventually it became a really much oppressive system and freedom of speech started to decline. And I remember how it was writing certain stuff about in, on Facebook. So um, it was not easy. Uh, yeah. But eventually then, like I really surrendered in the way that he saw that he was losing terribly. And plus in 2012, there was no opposition, strong opposition at all. And Ivanishvili, this oligarch, united opposition under his uh, money and lots of intellectuals stand next to him actually uh, and uh, mm, um, there was a leak of the uh, uh, people tortured in uh, uh, the uh, prisons that two weeks before the 2012 election and this is what the governmental propaganda back then could not neutralized and the elections were lost for the government on the 1st of October 2012. Since then we have the ruling party and uh, they are very well aware how the propaganda works. They managed to over like uh, change the government before so they maintain their power till these days but again so sooner or later people start New generation is born, grown uh, with different values, not with uh, the uh, corruption mm, background and so forth and so forth. And they uh, can check and double check a lot of stuff. So they can't be deceived so easily. And plus, now they have the age to vote. So now let's see how it goes. So if all this effort that uh, Mm, the society, and I can I don't say the opposition, the society that has made mm, was enough, uh, we'll see it. Of course, the government will uh, forge and uh, falsificate, uh, try to falsificate the elections. There is a certain you know, staff. They have a lot of tools to do it. So I don't know how, it, nobody knows what happened, but now we, now we are going to see it. So, so do you think Georgian Dream will end up winning? Probably. That's a that's the thing. What I don't have an no, answer. Of course, they will. But on well, the one hand, is what they call winning, and the other hand is, is there a real winning there? Because they can sell anything as winning. So, <clears throat> if they uh if there will be the cases, approved cases, that they really, really, really forged the elections because that's what they usually try to do, even now, then the one thing is what they call winning, and then the other will be, is this a winning, and if, will the West count it as winning or not? Because of all the pretty, you know, all the predecessor elections, the West admitted there was with certain uh, uh, let's say problems but they were officially uh, accepted mm. 
as democrat so now now we don't know mm. so so if, so if there is like if it's obvious that the falsification um of the votes and the manipulation of the election was on a on a wide scale do you think we'll see um demonstrations of the scale that were occurring in 2003 mm -hmm. i guess yes because uh, like uh, there is no other chance either it's like, it'll be like this or people who will leave the country because then the government will start hunting them down mm. this is what they promised so that's why uh i'm uh, well one thing that i'm sure is that the government won't take the constitutional majority because the government does not have a constitutional majority even now yeah, because the 2020 is the election with all the COVID regulations and limitations, even they could not get even back then. So it's nonsense. But how strong they will be in the parliament, that's the thing right now. Yeah. Well, so. thank you uh, so much for this. It was incredibly informative. And uh, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And I'm. I'm happy to uh, contribute, and I, I hope it was clear what I was trying to uh, define. Very much so, very much so. I, I really appreciate it. Um, and I know it's it's much later there in, in Tbilisi than it is for me, so I, really? I appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. It's like a half past 8 p.m. only. Yeah. So. All right. well, well, thank you so much, and have a wonderful rest thank of you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.